Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm here to give you a couple of tips on utilizing backdash cancelling and Korean backdashing uh, in a real match because there's a lot of simple things about utilizing it in a real match that almost everyone online gets wrong. And really, these tips I'm gonna give you aren't complicated to implement at all. So, the first thing I want to talk about is that you should always be backdashing. I mean, Korean backdashing and backdash cancelling when you're under pressure. Korean backdash was invented so that you could get away from your opponent faster than by just holding back or tapping back back over and over again while blocking mids and highs. Excuse my sloppy uh, backdash cancels. I have a new pad and I need to break in the buttons a little bit so that uh, my movement would work well. Um, anyway, there is no reason for not Korean backdashing under pressure. You're moving away from your opponent, blocking their attacks, so you have a chance to make some of their attacks with and then you can punish them and have your momentum, like in this case. See, I made Lily's down forward one whiff because I backdashed and I punished her for it and I would run in here and start my own offense. Defense is offense in Tekken sometimes. Um, online though, a lot of people get clipped while backdashing. That's one of the reasons why online is trash. Uh, it's hard to move exactly as you want to move online, especially with lag. And there's another thing online that I see in low ranks very often. They're placing them themselves to, to the wall on their own when they don't even have to. They're backdashing like this uh, so that they would have a wall behind their back. And in this situation, I'm just like, yay, free wall offense for me. You don't want to have the wall against your back. Because every almost every move in the game is more dangerous at the wall. You are asking for trouble at the wall. Now, staying at this range does no good to you at all. Because you can't reach your opponent. They can be mashing buttons uh, two kilometers away from you and you will never be able to punish them for that. So stay at close range or mid range or perhaps uh, slightly out of your whiff punisher's range so that if your opponent decides to press a button, you would, uh, you would be able to reach them with a whiff punisher. Uh, one simple example is with get up kicks uh, on a grounded opponent. They do mid kicks, for example. Don't backdash your way out of their range because you will not be able to punish them. So stay just outside of the range of your whiff punisher and bam. Then you can reach their mid get up kick or low get up kick. And there's nothing else they can do at this range to hurt you. So just wait out their get up kick and you get your free wall bounce punisher or whatever punisher your character has. A great way to practice with punishment is waiting out your opponent's uh, mashing buttons on the ground. Everyone in low ranks is guilty of pressing buttons when they're grounded. During my rank rush from beginner to Tekken God Prime again, uh, I basically killed everyone just by waiting out their springings and and get up kicks on the ground because uh, nobody knew how to stand up from the ground safely so I got three Matterhorns all the time with correct movement in Tekken you can make most mix-ups useless that's another reason why movement in Tekken is so important uh, let's take Lily's rage, tra rage Drive as an example this is scenario number one your opponent does a move that is plus some block, like Lily's Rage Drive, but it has great pushback on block. So they will not be able to follow up with anything because you can make most of the follow ups useless just with backdashing. Everything is going to whiff, and backdashing is really safe. So you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a free whiff punisher with no risk involved. So most of her follow-ups after the rage drive are going to whiff. For example, Lily's down for three. Just backdash and down. Get your free whiff punisher.
As I said, you can avoid many mix-ups in the game with correct movement. Uh, when it comes to evading mix-ups with backdashing, Eddie is a great example. You can nullify so much of his mix-ups in offense with backdashing. Let's take his back one four string as an example. It can end up with a launching low, or it can end up with a mid. Uh, back one four three, I think. Yeah, back one four three. Here, if you just tap back dash after back one four, you will make the low whiff, and you're still going to block the mid. There, you get your free launch punisher. And I'm gonna block the mid now and punish him again. Oops, that's minus 10 on block, I think. Of course, you cannot see it, but I was tapping back after back 1-4, so I blocked the mid anyway. Another exa example is his relaxed stance after running 3, for example. Uh, with tapping back, you're gonna block the mid, and the launching low doesn't launch at tip range, so you will be able to get your floating punisher there. I mean, you will be able to float him for a combo there. Like this. When it comes to Akuma, he has his infamous down 4 low, for example, which uh, uh, tracks both ways and has great range. The problem here is that he doesn't have too many good mids that would reach the opponent at this range. Which means I found backdashing and ducking really effective versus him. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped you. I'll see you next time. Bye bye